begin. In 2019, I was living in Berlin. Um, I had trained as a birth doula. So I fantasized about waking up at 3 a.m. to phone calls saying, right, she's in labor. And I'd like go and like squeeze the hips of a laboring woman. Like that was my happy place. I thought there was nothing more magical than being in the room of birth and, and being the welcome party for life here on earth and being like, hey baby, welcome to the world, it's great here. And um, that's where I thought I was headed. After I did my training though, I wasn't quite ready to be on call and give up the life of festivals and travel and um, spontaneity. So I thought, okay, hang on, just give me one more year, just give me one year in Berlin to just play and be footloose and fancy free. Um, in Berlin, I was having a really hard time. It was a really like, horribly lonely place for me. It really brought up a lot of stuff. And there was a point where I was thinking about coming back to Australia, and I was in my, my boyfriend at the time, his bedroom, just dancing and moving through things. Like dance had always been my safe space, my meditation, my prayer. So I was just moving through some feelings and he'd come up from the kitchen and saw that I was dancing and he, he, he got excited. He said, oh, can I stay and watch? And I thought, yeah, so sure. Like, but I didn't think anything of it. He was a DJ. I loved dancing. We lived our lives part-time on dance floors. He'd seen me dance plenty of times. But having those two scenarios next to each other me dancing on my own for an hour, just fully embodied, and then him coming into the room and watching me, I noticed my, my presence shifted out of my body and into my head, and I was really hyper aware that I was being watched. I was wondering how I was being perceived. I lost my flow, and I, I just thought, oh gosh, like, like, what am I doing? Where am I? Like, I, this is weird. Um, but I also thought, okay, I've got more work to do, because I'd had this idea to run dance workshops for pregnant women, to help them prepare for birth with dance, so to help bring them out of their busy minds and into their bodies. What's your body saying? Follow your body, trust your body. And in that moment, I thought, well, I'm not embodied right now. I'm not in my body, so who am I to offer the medicine of dance to anyone if I haven't done my work? And so I just had that okay, all right, I've got more work to do. And as if I had asked a question, this voice dropped into my head and said, go to a strip club. And I laughed it off at first. I was like, all right, whatever. And it came back and said, no, really, go to a strip club. The women there have access to something that you don't, and they're to be your next teachers. And I kind of just sat with that for a while and was like, really? Like, is, that, is that the path? And it took me about two weeks to build the courage and just like dancing in my bedroom thinking like, could I do this? Like, could I actually, I couldn't dance for my boyfriend. Like, could I dance for strangers? Could I, um, could I set myself free on a stage? And as I was going back into that moment of feeling, um, when I jumped out of my body and into my head, I, I kind of went back to that space. I'm like, what is that, that shyness that, you know, it's obviously rooted in some kind of fear. Like, what is it? Why did I, why did I hesitate? Why did I not feel safe in that moment? And I thought back to different times in my life over the years where I would start dancing at a restaurant or at a bus stop in the middle of the streets. Like I would create dance floors where they didn't exist. But I would, I realized that I would always have my eyes closed and where I would look down and I would never make eye contact with people and I could see that people were filming me and people were watching me and so I felt into that and I realized that there was an underlying belief that if I made eye contact with them and then they knew that I knew that they were watching well I wouldn't be dancing for myself anymore I'd be performing I'd be dancing for an audience and if I was dancing for an audience or if I was performing it must mean that I think that I'm good. 
and you're not supposed to think you're very good. And I realized that that was a subconscious belief that I was carrying. Um, from the very beautiful women in my life, mothers or aunties who would get triggered by other women, or you know, who does she think she is, or blah, 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 and kind of the messaging I got was like, okay, so you're like, don't own, don't own any of your power. You know, I realize, and, and there are songs about it, you know, what's that um, song, you don't know you're beautiful, that's what makes you beautiful. It's like a woman is allowed to be, or a person is allowed to be beautiful, or intelligent, or talented, but the minute they try to own it, the world will want to take it away from you, if you try and claim your power. So I called bullshit on that, and uh, decided to go to the strip club and see where this was leading me. Um, and also, why was I being led to a strip club when I wanted to be a birth doula? Like, the, what was the link there? What's the connection? What am I going to learn about birth from strippers? Um, and actually, at that time, I thought, what am I going to learn full stop from strippers? I thought that I was pretty open-minded at that point. You know, I'd been to Burning Man four times. I'd, like, been here, there, and everywhere. But I still had some some judgment, you know, this uh, belief that the women there maybe didn't have other options or were a little bit lost or whatever, insert whatever conditioning I'd had and stories I'd been fed. So I went to the, went to the strip club, found a club. Um, I went in for, I went just to check it out initially. I called a club in Berlin. I said, hey, I see you're looking, you're hiring a bartender. I'm interested. I said, oh, no, the bartender job's taken, but we're still hiring a dancer. It's like, okay, I'm still interested. <laughs> She's like, great, you want to come in? I was like, uh, yeah, can I come in and just like meet with your manager tonight? Yeah, 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 sure, sure, come in. And then I said, okay, cool, thanks. And I hang up, and she calls me back. She says, do you want to work tonight? I was like, no, 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 I don't. I don't want to work tonight. I just want to come in. I want to check it out. I want to see what it's about. Like, like I'm in Berlin. I don't know what clubs are like there. Like, is it just dancing? Like, what's, I'm not, I'm not going to work without sussing it out. And so I'm saying, I didn't say that to her, but I'm just saying, oh, no, 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 I... I don't know what I'm doing, I just want to try it out. She said, it's fine, we all start from ground zero. You don't need to have any experience. I said, well, well I don't have anything to wear. She's like, just any bikini or lingerie. And I said, I don't have any shoes, just any pair of stilettos. I don't have a pair of stilettos. What, you don't have stilettos? I said, no, I've come here in a suitcase. Like I, she said, that's oh, fine. I'll just come in and, and meet the manager. And I remember walking into this club and like my eyes lighting up and seeing these women just prowl across the club. And they had this, this sense of like knowing what they had that was palpable and, and alluring. And they were dressed up in this, you know, beautiful lingerie and I was like, this could be my, like, this could be my job, like, I could wear, like, this could be my uniform. I don't even wear lingerie. Okay, great. Like, why don't I wear lingerie? Why aren't I doing this? Why aren't I walking around at the home like this? And, um, I sat there and I, you know, spoke to the, to the owner and she kind of told me what the deal was and the way that you really make money at the club, uh, especially in Europe, is from drinks being bought for you. So you're... Having, uh, having chats with clients and they buy you a bottle of uh, champagne and then you get a cut of that. And I hate champagne. I was like, okay. And, you know, can I hold a conversation with someone if it's not you? I was like, I really don't have much of a poker face. Like, if, if I'm not interested, you can read it on me. So I thought, I don't know how that's going to go. And then the other way you make money is doing the private dances. I was like, well, I've never done a private dance before. I have no idea if I'll enjoy that. The thing that I was interested in was getting up on the stage and just dancing and seeing if I could allow myself to be witnessed and to see if I could find my freedom in that context. So I thought about it. I didn't have a pair of shoes just to trial with. If I had a pair of shoes that fit me, I could have just trialed and 
sit, like, see how it feels and then make my decision. But at the time, I didn't want to buy a pair of heels just to trial if I didn't think I'd keep the job. And when I sat with it, I thought the novelty would wear off. It's, yeah, it's probably not really what I want to do. And then um, I said, thanks, but no thanks. But I had this, I had this like, damn, I kind of just wanted to just do the trial just so I could say I did it and, and see how, like, I probably don't actually want to be a stripper, but I wanted to do that trial. And I thought, well, hang on, how many other women feel like that? How many other women are like, I don't want to be a stripper. I've, I've got this other job that I love, but I want to be a stripper for a night. Like, I want to be celebrated. I don't want to be... Um, like captivating audiences with a subtle flick of my hips and, you know, um, hypnotizing people and just kind of feeling and reveling in my energy. So I thought, uh, okay, maybe I'm never, I was never meant to be a stripper. Maybe I was just have, meant to have the inspiration for this event that I wanted to do. And I had this idea of this, like a pop-up strip club for women only where they could go and just take a turn and be a stripper for a night in a sea of other women who are all there for the same reason. So I said thanks, but no thanks. But then the, the voice kept coming back and wouldn't leave me alone. And I thought, okay, really? Okay. All right, I've got to go back. I've got to do this. There's something more for me. So then I, I called up the manager and I said, I've changed my mind. I want a trial. I want to see. I just want to see. And on the first night... I remember the, the club had opened, but we didn't have any guests yet. And so it was just all the girls are sitting around waiting for the first customers to come in. And one of the dancers was up on the stage. She had a phone out. She was... Uh, taking videos and photos of herself and like dancing in the mirror and checking herself out. I think she'd just gotten like new hair extensions that day. So she's like posing and like just loving up on herself. And I was sitting about this far away from her, just like wanting the earth to swallow me whole. I just felt total cringe. I thought this woman is like loving on herself so hard in front of everybody. And I just, I felt really like, oh, this is not my place. What am I doing here? What am I doing here? And then this other voice came up and said, Caitlin, standing in front of you is a woman who has decided to enjoy this body that she's been given in this lifetime. And why shouldn't she? Would it make you, would you feel better if she had less confidence? Would you feel better if she made herself smaller? Would that be... With, with that, is that what you want for her? And so I was like, okay, I'm in the right place. This is what I'm here to learn. And a big lesson was permission. Permission to own yourself, to own your desires, your instincts, your talent, your beauty. Um, and not to deflect or hide or repress it. And it was a really beautiful scenario the first dance I had um, on the stage I was like we had a roster and when the first customers came in they're like right showtime girls are up and I was on stage second and I'm like Fuck, put me on second I'm a new girl here okay all right and I'm sitting in the corner and my legs were trembling like shaking and I'm like trying to make them stop and I'm thinking this is embarrassing I'm gonna get up on the stage and make such a fool of myself and just be trembling and that's not sexy and the people that came in were, it was a woman, and she was so thrilled to be there. And she had like dragged one of her guy friends, and he was like, like didn't really want to be there. And I get on the stage, and the music starts, and I just collapse into the music, and disappeared, and just was in my element. And this woman, this first customer I had, was just in total awe of me and she was like oh, you're amazing you're so beautiful it was like this is it. she just her excitement was so palpable and it was a really beautiful reminder that when you trust that inner voice and you do something that terrifies you but you you sign up you say okay i, I trust i'm, I'm gonna go here 
then life will meet you halfway. And life's like, just trust it, trust it, trust it. I know you're trembling, I know you're shaking, but I'm gonna make your first customer really like beautiful. It's like you show up and then life meets you as well. And that was a really beautiful lesson, a reminder. And then um, through my time dancing, what I really came to see is how much shame is projected onto the female body or held by women in the female body, especially around our reproductive organs, um, our breasts, womb, pussy. And this is the same organ group that we use to grow and have our babies if we go down that path. And so I came to see the link between sexual shame, sexual repression, and the dire state of childbirth. Like at the moment, there's a running statistic that one in three women will describe their birth as traumatic. And like that's, we've got to do much better than that. Like that's really not great. Like that's, that's a sad situation. And, and so I kind of, when I did start taking on my first doula clients, I kind of felt like it's too late. Like I can't, I, I can only get this woman so far. I can't take her deep because she's already pregnant and vulnerable. And I don't have much time to get her from here to there. And the message I got was I need to get to women sooner. And so then the fire in my belly came back to just work in the realm of sensuality and expression and like releasing shame and self-ownership and trusting in the body. And I realized that if I get to women and do this work, like well before they're even thinking of becoming pregnant, by the time they're ready to have their babies, if that's what they choose, their experience of childbirth will be so much different just as a natural byproduct because we labor how we live. And so what am I today? I'm an embodiment coach, erotic dance teacher, but I actually still feel like I'm very much a birth keeper just disguised as an erotic dance teacher. Like these women have no idea what I'm doing for them, ultimately. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm, I'm here to put the, the feminine and, and the female body back in, in a place where she belongs, where she is revered and respected and trusted. As young girls, when we go through our period, like the, the narrative is that like having a period is gross and shameful and embarrassing and a curse. And, and it's like, this is the way that, that we experience the female body? That's not cool. How can we possibly expect women to just go into birth trusting their bodies when that's not being modeled for us? And that trust in the body and to go inward and listen to yourself is not being something that's being fostered. And women are always looking outward, outside of themselves, to their doctors, to their midwives, to their doulas, saying, how do I birth my baby? Because from a young age, we've learned that it's not safe to be in this body. It's not safe to trust this body. And so we put our authority outside. Okay, I think, uh, yeah, any questions? Yeah.